Today, Eric Hutchinson, the groom who lost his new wife in a deadly car crash, filed a lawsuit against Jamie Komorowski. She's the driver who police say hit Eric and Samantha and two other family members after their wedding on Folly Beach. Now, the attorney for the family says they want justice and answers about what happened leading up to the crash. Tara Jabor joins us live now from Folly Beach. And Tara, what does the lawsuit say? Katie Tessa, the family is requesting a jury trial. And according to that lawsuit, Jamie Komorowski visited several bars before crashing into the newlywed couple here on Folly Beach. Now five bars and restaurants in a management group is also being sued. The lawsuit names the Drop-In, the Crab Shack, Snapper Jacks, Taco Boy, and El Gallo Bar and Grill, claiming negligence. Attorneys say on April 28th, Jamie Komorowski was bar hopping from Daniel Island to Folly Beach. Dalton says the night of the crash, Komorowski was with co-workers and supervisors from Taco Boy. She was an employee there, and the restaurant denies the gathering. That there was a almost routine gathering um, to go out to bars or a bar after their shifts or, you know, in the middle of their shifts or, or at different times, and that supervisors would also attend um, those, those gatherings or those events. The lawsuit also claims that Komorowski had a history of alcohol abuse. The attorneys say that information comes from social media and law enforcement. They say more information about Komorowski's night is still being uncovered through the investigation. We hope that the bars will cooperate with us um, and provide whatever they have. Um, I would think that given the tragic nature of this case that, that they would want to own up to um, whatever happened or didn't happen for that matter. As for the groom, Eric Hutchinson, and the two other passengers, Dalton says they are all healing, but a long path is ahead. You go from the happiest moment of your life to an unfathomable tragedy. They're all recovering physically and emotionally, as you can imagine. Um, the groom himself is, is doing okay. Uh, we're in very close contact with him. We visit with him regularly. He's got a wonderful, tight-knit family, both on his side and from um, his late wife's side. The family of Eric and Samantha also want to send a message about the dangers of impaired driving. Use this as an example. We all can share responsibility in combating drunk driving. Um, talk to your friend, talk to your employees. Don't let your employees do this. And we just heard back from Jamie Komorowski's attorney. This is the first time that we have heard from them. They told us, quote, we simply ask that there not be a rush to judgment. Our court system is founded upon principles of justice and mercy, and that is where all facts will come to light, end quote. An inspiration beyond the badge. Charleston Police Chief Luther Reynolds says he is ending his cancer treatment and entering hospice care. The chief has been battling a rare form of cancer for the past 18 months, and our Kennedy Buck joins us now. And Kennedy, you spoke to people who have worked closely with Chief Reynolds over the years. That's right, Tessa. I spoke with Paul Tamburino with the Citizens Police Advisory Council and former North Charleston Chief of Police Reggie Burgess. Both say Chief Reynolds is the type of leader that cared about his staff, his job, and his community. I will be here. I'm not going anywhere. I do appreciate the prayers. I appreciate the support. Chief Reynolds announced his cancer diagnosis back in October 2021. It's an aggressive cancer that took his leg, but not his faith nor his spirit. Thank God, you know, for every, everything I do. We were there as he worked to regain his strength and learn to walk with a new leg. The more independent I am, uh, the more uh, effective I can be. And his determination never faltered. He's got such a positive spirit that he's never even when, you know, he, he you know, had his first battle and he lost his leg. There was never a woe is me. It was always about, I'm going to come back stronger. For the past five years, Chief Reynolds served the Charleston Police Department with integrity and transparency. People who worked closely with him describe him as an excellent example of what a leader should be. He represented, I think everybody that meets him will tell you that the first character trait he recognizes his genuine sincerity and that he's, he's a gentleman. And I think the city of Charleston has seen a model for what a police chief can be. Chief to all and friend to many, but for another man who was chief, Luther Reynolds is a brother. And he told me, he says, man, I, 
I, I'm going to, I'm going to lean on you uh, once in a while. So I, I'll lean on you as well. And he says, uh, he said, I mean that he said, nothing should separate our friendship that we're, we're, just, we're about to begin. And um, from that day on, uh, like I tell people, we're, we're brothers from, from other mothers, you know, we're brothers from other mothers. Um, we're like-minded. Um, we, we think nothing but the best for our community. Former North Charleston Chief of Police Reggie Burgess has been by Reynolds' side. Despite leading different cities and even being different races, the two men have an incredible bond. This, this world kind of separates people sometimes. And that has never been the case with me or, or Nor Luther. We look at each other like brothers. He has passion for every human being I've seen him around. Uh, he has integrity because when he is involved with things, he's trying to do it absolutely the right way. Just the difference that you're making, literally saving lives on a regular basis. Luther, we love you and thank you for being an inspiration to not just me publicly, but in private. You're, you're an inspiration to a lot of people and you, you walk the walk and not many people in your type of position walk the walk every day. Many chiefs and city and state leaders throughout the low country shared on Twitter today about how they will continue keeping Chief Reynolds and his family in their thoughts and prayers. Senator Marlon Kempson said how Chief Reynolds is the living definition of a public servant dedicated to service and protect Charleston citizenry. Working for you live in studio, Kennedy Buck, News 4. And in his letter released today, Chief Reynolds reveals he's still thinking of others, saying, as I set out on the final journey that God has planned for me, I'm thankful that I will be able to spend these days in the city I've come to love, surrounded by family and friends. It is the last great gift in a life that's been full of them. And remembering the life of a young man who loved to serve his community, Chad Andrew Kelly Jr., amongst coroner, firefighter, engineer, and EMT, died May 12th in a crash. And today, family, friends, and fellow first responders came together to lay him to rest. Our Sedacia Smalls has more on the heartfelt memorial. He wasn't going to quit until it was done, and he made sure that everybody around him was enjoying the job once again. For Drew Kelly Jr., firefighting was in his blood. He didn't waste any time. Um, he learned as much as he could learn, and he got as good as he could get in such a short amount of time. Those who knew Kelly say he was a leader, had a servant's heart, and was always willing to help. He's one of those people on a fire scene, if you told him to do something and you saw him not doing it, it was either because it was already done or he was going to get a bigger hammer to go complete the job. Roy says Kelly had the best energy, even during the most unfortunate events. We lean on those senior people with more experience and more job knowledge, but until now we didn't realize how much we were leaning on him. And Kelly's bright personality helped with the morale around his department. His genuine passion for the career, for the job, that's what he was known for, that's what we will always remember him for. Fighting fires not only for his hometown of Monk's Corner, but the entire Low Country. His loss was felt far and wide. These trucks aren't just here because it simply was a firefighter. These trucks are here because they knew him, people knew him, and understand the loss.